Good evening or good afternoon, wherever you may be. I'm Elizabeth George, Chief Membership Officer with the American Guild of Organists. And I think you're in for a treat tonight. Uh, the title of this is, It's All About Relationships, Building a Community Within Your Chapter. And we've got some wonderful uh, chapter leaders that have some great stories to share about how they've done this. Before I introduce our moderator, I just wanna go over a couple of housekeeping notes. This is being recorded and probably within the next 48 hours, the link to the recording will be sent out to every chapter officer. Uh, we do want you to ask questions. So please use the Q&A icon down at the bottom of your screen and post your questions. And throughout it, I will just be uh, looking at that and I may pop in and say, hey, we've got a question from so-and-so. Uh, or we can do it at the end too, but we really want this to be as interactive as possible. So now I'm just going to turn it over to our moderator, Connor McMains, who is currently serving as Dean of the Dallas chapter, and who I've had the pleasure, and many of us actually here tonight have had the pleasure of working with him as president of the Committee on Membership Development and Chapter Support. So Connor, the floor is yours. Hello, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. We're so glad that you're able to join us here tonight. Um, this is a topic that we have all been looking forward to uh, for quite some time. Um, I think you're all, you all know why you're here, but our main topic for the discussion this evening is hosting events uh, as part of your chapter series that maybe are less organ centric and more about fellowship, socialization, um, and just time to meet and greet and talk to each other. Uh, so many of us get kind of stuck in a rut a little bit. The many of you who have planned events for your chapter before may know that it can be easy to get stuck into a rut of, oh, okay, we have another recital, so we're going to have a recital, and then we'll have some, you know, some cookies afterwards, and that's it, and that's our program, and we're kind of done. And we kind of forget that um, some people need this time for fellowship and socialization, um, and it uh, it can be a really beneficial thing. So we've got some wonderful people here this uh, the evening. These panelists are going to be discussing uh, what their chapters have done before that have worked, that haven't worked, how we got started, things like that. Um, and so before we get into it too much, I want to invite them to introduce themselves. Um, I may have a different order of people on my screen than you do, so I'll just ask them one at a time. Um, Judith Miller, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you serve, what chapter, and a little bit about your chapter too. Okay, um, I am a secretary and past dean of the Southern Indiana chapter. And uh, we have about 40 members. I, uh, I think that uh, we uh, have uh, quite an active Southern Indiana chapter. Uh, I checked, we had uh, 16 meetings last, uh, last year, our uh, programs or events. And uh, see, nine of those were concerts. Uh, our chapter has about, uh, as I said, 40 members, and they cover New Albany, Clarksville, Jeffersonville, Corridan, and Charleston. And then we have a group that's in uh, Madison, Indiana, and uh, we have some ways that uh, we've tried to uh, include them in, uh, in some of our meetings, too, although they don't uh, regularly come. So, um, I, as I said, I think our chapter, chapter is quite active, and I have uh, several ways that that. Uh, we have um, managed to, to uh, make people feel at home and feel welcome. So I will cover those as we have our discussion after a while. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Lois Holdridge, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your chapter. I am the Dean of the Orange County chapter in Southern California. And we are a chapter of about 133 paid up right now, although some are in the process of renewing. Um, we too are an active chapter, although we haven't had that many programs <laughs> as, as Judy has. Um, we are struggling to find ways to connect better with our members. And uh, so I'm eager to hear what my fellow panelists have to say. Thank you. Uh, Rana Davis, how about you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your chapter, please. Hi, I'm the Dean of the Worcester chapter. Actually, my second time as Dean, the last time was before email happened. 
And being a dean now is much easier in terms of communication versus snail mail. But I have the legacy of inheriting a first Thursday of every month luncheon. And it is very well attended by anywhere from eight to 12 people. And it seems to rotate amongst the same 20 or 25 people. So our challenge is to get it bigger. But our, and our chapter just went to 101 members last week. So we are growing and uh, very active. I have an, a terrific sub-dean, Dr. Marjorie Ness, who is in charge of all of our programming. And uh, she's been incredible. We think we're very active and an awesome chapter. And we have a Rager 150 Festival coming up in November. We hope that you will seriously consider coming to New England in November to this festival. It's going to be amazing. That's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Judy Cole, would you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about, about yourself and the chapter where you formerly served. Yes. So I am the former dean of the North Shore chapter in Chicago. We have uh, several other chapters, the Chicago and um, some other ones. But um, I've been involved in that one for about 40 years, um, which is tells my age, I guess. Um, but it's it's a great chapter. And the most exciting thing is that we're having a regional um, in coming up in a couple of weeks. So I'm very involved in that on the steering committee. And there's still plenty of room if anybody's in our region and would like to join us. So that, that's the biggest thing on the docket right now. That's great. Thank you. Good luck. That's a lot of work. It is, yeah. You know, it's very unifying though. I think when you work on a project, it it, it gives it just infuses the chapter with some energy that I'm not sure we'd get. I mean, it, it, at the same level as just doing programs. So it was a hard decision to go for it. And uh, I'm really glad we did. That's great. Uh, for those of you watching, I, I hope that you're, you're seeing that everyone here is very passionate about what they do um, with their chapter and with the AGO. And um, I think that that's something that we all want in our chapter both for us and for the, our members. And so that's one of the reasons why we wanted to talk about this tonight, because uh, like I said, you know, people love organ concerts, our members, we think love organ concerts and that's wonderful. Um, but there's, there's that something more that Judy was just mentioning, you know, a, a way to, to get involved, to be excited about it. And so for those of you who haven't tried yet something like this, some sort of fellowship time, um, that's what tonight's about, is to talk about what that kind of looks like in various chapters. Uh, and how to get it started if you haven't done that before. Um, so I'm going to just kind of pose some questions to the group here, and anyone feel free to chime in, tell us your experiences, what you've heard, what what uh, works and doesn't work for you. And uh, as Elizabeth mentioned at the beginning, she'll be monitoring the Q&A. If any of you have questions, please ask them in the chat, um, and we'll be, able, be sure to get to them either during or at the end of the presentation tonight. Uh, so the first question I have, if y'all wouldn't mind answering, is how does your chapter incorporate these events uh, or, or times for fellowship or socialization, um, either in connection with a program that you already have going on or uh, possibly more interestingly to some people as a stand standalone event, an event by itself? Uh, if anyone would like to share your, your experience with that, I'd love to be interested in that. Yeah, Judith. Uh well, uh, we often have had uh, catered dinners uh, in conjunction with our concerts, and that has worked very well. Pre-pandemic, uh, we won $1,000 once for, from the AGO for a uh, membership contest, and so we decided that every uh, member should uh, get to... Uh, have some benefit from that. So we started out with some free catered dinners and that really created a lot of loyalty, which held on after we had to go back to charging them for the, for the dinners. So uh, I, I highly recommend that. They, they stayed loyal for years, at least up until the pandemic time. And uh, th then there have been times even this year when we, from individual donations, we paid a part of the cost of the catered dinner and that, that helped also. But um, usually our socialization times have been in conjunction with uh, some event or some program that we have. 
Judith, can I ask you and anyone else as you respond, feel free to add this to the question. Um, when you, when your chapter has paid, uh, at least in part, um, or even when it has not and you've charged members, do you pay, for, for instance, a restaurant, if you're at a restaurant or something, or it's, uh, do you pay for that yourselves or do the members pay themselves or, or you pay a portion? Have you had something like that? Well, uh, we just charged them less when, when we had some individual donations to take care of part of the cost. Uh, but then we're always, we've always been dealing with caterers not with restaurants. And so um, sure. so we pay our treasurer who in turn pays for the catering. Great, thank you. I just wanna make sure I cover all the bases for people who have never tried something like this before and, and are curious about what obstacles there may be to getting started. So anybody else wanna share how your chapter has kind of started something like this, if you know? We just recently had a, an Italian dinner in a restaurant that was open to everybody and uh, it was a kind of a spur of the moment thing uh, that came up at a board meeting when we were talking about how to uh, better meet the needs of our members. And uh, for that, each one who came did pay for their own meal. Uh, we used to have a lot more social things, but uh, COVID kind of took care of that. And so we're just re-emerging and uh, exploring other ways. Tonight um, is our last board meeting of the season and that's going to be at a restaurant. Again, we will be covering our own expenses. But the fun thing with our, um, with our Italian dinner was that our board member who planned it all came up with a set of questions as icebreakers. Um, I won't read them all, but uh, some of the suggestions were, uh, what is your favorite organ piece to play and why? Um, if you were president for a day, what would you do? So we were all over the map. What's the weirdest food you've eaten and where? President uh, of what? I guess the country. <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> yes. What breed of dog would you be? What catchy jingle or a bit of advertising has stuck with you? I thought the questions were very clever. Yeah. And we each picked one to answer. And that was before dinner. And then after dinner, we had some trivia. But it was, it was fun. And everybody really got into it. That's great. Yeah, it, it's, I think uh, a lot of organists, we were talking about this the other day, I think a lot of organists, whether they realize it or not, are very introverted. Um, and so something like that to help help bring out, uh, you know, personalities, I think is a, a great, you know, a great fun way to do that in a way that gets everybody interested. So, Rana, can you tell us a little about your, your first Thursday lunches, if you know how those got started or what they look like? I believe they started in the evening years ago a few people came to dinner, but I think because of families and people didn't drive at dark, just a whole host of reasons it moved to lunch. I'm not sure when that happened, but we've been drawing enough people. Um, I liked what Lois said about the questions. Uh, we did a, who was the most famous organist that you've heard or taken a master class from? And we had everything from Liberace to, you know, the. The, the classics, which, and some were sitting right at our table. So, so that, that's a good, we didn't ask who would we, what they would do as president for the day that we'll have to try that. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I'm concerned about, and I've even gotten the ideas already just planning this from working with, with colleagues here, uh, we're with kind of the same 20, 25 people and we keep it at one restaurant because it's right off a major thoroughfare, it's exit four or five and it, it, the consistency I think is helping us build and maintain uh, attendance. But I'm thinking maybe we need to do something for a younger group that maybe meets at four or three, five in the afternoon, beer and blab, beer and boredom, you know, some organ stop that goes with beer or wine and wine is too negative. Uh, <laughs> but just thinking of ways we could maybe move it to a a different age 
bracket, I think we've got mostly very mature people coming to lunch. Well, there are a couple exceptions. Uh, it's very interesting that we have a young man coming who is extremely autistic, PhD, brilliant. He told me this is the first time he's been able to come out and just kind of be with us because he feels seen and cared for. Mm. So I think this is what we can do with these lunches. It really warmed my heart that this was his response. So we, we just are very consistent. We have the same logo for the first Thursday. If I can't make it, I call one of the frequent people and say, Kurt, can you be the host today or the hostess? And we just never fail. July, Christmas, December, we're going to do it unless it snows. Any questions? Oh, the other thing it's been helpful for, by the way, it's been a little think tank. Sometimes I throw out a question and say, I'm thinking of running this kind of a program. What do you think? And they've given excellent ideas. We've also, one day I came away with about $350 in fundraising because we're working on this rigor. We're also doing selling our Worcester organ book. If any would like to buy one, let me know. The funds are going to our scholarship. So we've been just used to having fun and building the chapter and the morale, trying to raise money and just do it all at the same time. That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah, it seems like you're really making a, a positive impact. And I, I think that's really showing the importance of something like this, something like this that some of us may you know not be used to. So that's great. Judy. I think I'm going to throw in some trivia questions, though. I think that's a great idea. That yeah, can... absolutely. Make sure if you ask about president. We can swap you, them you, around. <laughs> you you <laughs> ask them about president of country and president of AGO. There we you can, go. Yeah, <laughs> see what people are wanting. That's great. Judy, do you have a, some you want to share about what your chapter did? Well, I I guess the, we've talked about some practical things and, and maybe my thoughts a little bit more going back to the basics or philosophical. That's but great. when I first uh, became Dean uh, a couple of years ago, I felt that the most important thing that I could do was to, um, to make it better was to, to look at the culture of our chapter. Um, what ways could we be more inviting, more warm and friendly? And uh, Ron, as you talked about, you were a little intimidated in the beginning, so less elitist, uh, which I didn't know that that was an issue. But when you talk to people, it really was. They didn't feel kind of worthy of being uh, in the class that they thought everybody else was, which is so not true. We're just happy for warm bodies. That, um, but we used a couple well-known phrases to get this message across to our membership in any way that we could. And a couple that we used were, uh, we'll leave the light on for you. Remember that Tom Boutet, um Motel 6, I think it was. Or the other one is, there's a seat at the table for you. And these slogans were so well known, but they convey a message of inclusion, drawing a circle that not leaves people out, but, but brings people in. So we wanted people to feel welcome at every event. And we made sure they knew um, verbally and you know any way we could that they would be missed if they weren't there. So we did these, uh, this message very clear in, in our, we call the Overtones newsletter, email blasts and verbally at every event. And we also made sure there was a social event, a social aspect of every event, even though it cost more money, was a lot more work, especially with big artists. Uh, we always had a reception. We, we, because going back to a thousand years, you know, breaking bread, being eating together, that's all part of um, a method of, of helping create the culture of belonging. And I, I think in this day and age, time and money are such precious commodities that people are willing to pay the money to join AGO, but only if there's tangible benefits of, of, um, that they get out of it. So, um, we try to think, how can we make members feel like they belong to this group? And from the very beginning, from promotion to, um, to the musical events. So it takes a lot of diligence to do that, but I am really passionate about that. And then I kind of leave the programming for other people. 
I mean, I'm in long hair, but I, that is the message that I want to. I'm going to jump in because we've got some really good comments and questions. And Rana, you're going to be really happy because Mark Anderson, who is the Dean of the Central North Carolina chapter and a former district convener, just said, I'd love to buy one of the books from the Worcester chapter. Mm. So see, you've already, you've already got some transactions going here tonight. And then I love it. Your, your sub-dean said, would you consider a second group to augment the current one rather than a different time for only one? Interesting answer, question. You know, do, do you want to think about moving the times around? Um, David Beatty um, mentions chapters I've been dean for or co-dean, as in my current role with Annapolis, have been challenged with large po portions of the chapter needing to have non music, non-education day jobs and are thus unavailable for fellowship activities during typical business hours. Um, contending against that are the large number of retired or older members who have difficulty driving in evenings or after dark. Scheduling of meetings to the preference of either group is viewed as exclusionary. How do you leaders ensure that you're not excluding those who have full-time day jobs or those who cannot travel at night? I heard Rana mention that her uh, luncheon meeting does address the latter group, but haven't heard mention of addressing those that must work during the day and are not free until after 7 p.m. Yeah, you know, I'll just say, comment. go ahead, Connor. No, please, go ahead. Uh, it's interesting because I, um, I had the pleasure of installing three chapters in uh, on the west coast of Florida last night. Uh, the Tampa and the uh, Clearwater and uh, St. Petersburg chapters. And they started talking about how some of their senior members were not comfortable driving at night and carpooling. So, yes. you know, pick up the phone and say, we'd love to have you come. I'd be very happy to pick you up and drop you off. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. And I'm going to leave you all to the conversation. I'm thinking we could do something quarterly maybe in the four o'clock to seven o'clock with the, those very good ideas of carpooling and still keeping, because we do have like a half, I mean, a quarter, almost a quarter of our membership rotating on lunch. So I don't want to quit that, but I'm liking the ideas I'm hearing here. And Judith, I would love your, I, uh, Judy, I'm sorry, your ideas. You've got two great slogans. I need a slogan for electronic versus wind. We have about 15 electronic organs in our, and a lot of them feel intimidated by this guild. So can you help me with that? Mm, let me think of that. But that's, yeah. that, that, is, that is something that comes up a lot. And maybe, maybe it's a workshop um, or uh, events using electronic organs and saying, look, these are as legit as our concert, um, a progressive, you could do a progressive, um, organ crawl, but just electronic instruments, and and that endorses. But I'll think about that. Maybe somebody will send that in the chat. Can you get on that, please? <laughs> yeah, I will. Right now. We're right getting on, lots right of on that idea, Judy. We're getting you know, lots of okay. thumbs up. I love it. Uh, Ryan an organ, Frederick. An organ crawl, uh, yeah. organ crawl. Uh, Judy. You know, you were mentioning one that's just electronic instruments. I know that. Um, we did one a few years ago, I can't remember, back in my chapter, and it had a mix, and uh, something we never really talked about, but I was happy to see uh, a mix of, of pipe and electronic instruments is because I, I felt like it, it gave more validity to the electronic instruments, that they were included in the group, not necessarily that it's an additional or a second group, but yeah. that it's included in the same group. And You're so right. I, think, maybe, I think both of those are legitimate. Uh, maybe practices. with a maybe with a mix, everybody comes instead yeah. of counting yeah. it. Oh, this yeah. is just me. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And you know, we we have, we had David who asked that question about um, you know addressing both groups, and then I think Marjorie uh, recommended as well. You know, a second group. Ronnie, you were kind of just talking about that. You know, a, a quarterly option, but. You are also trying to find a way to to meet the needs of other members in your chapter who are currently not coming, and and I think that's another idea. You know, a second group, and then we talked about this the other day too. You know, finding a way to give them the people who are coming ownership of that that event. Say, hey, y'all, y'all notice that these people are missing. How can we get them here? What do you think will work? 
you know, I, y'all are, y'all are retired or you're available to come at lunch or something. Well, how about, you know, maybe next month, would y'all want to try doing something in the evening and we can all agree to be there at, you know, uh, like we normally would, but maybe we'll see if we get a, another crowd there as well, who doesn't normally come. Something like that might work too. What, what about a Saturday brunch? You know, and then that, that solves the issue of, um, I mean, a lot of people, could, more people could be available on a Saturday brunch. You could run a bus and do a mimosa organ crawl on a Saturday <laughs> morning. You have to run a bus. I, I, I've got weirdo. a great comment from Mark Downey uh, in relation to what you're talking about between electronic and pipe organs. So Mark says, we recently did a program, This Ain't Your Granny's Organ, to promote electronic and hybrid organs. Lots of fun and information about the new technology in the electric organs. Thank you, Mark. And then That's we have- That's it. Don, yeah, uh, this Donna, ain't your your... Granny's, I love it. Yes. I love it. Let's, you we know, have a group flattery. that- We borrow from you know, that. I was just thinking, we have these spreadsheets, and I need to just go into an analysis by zip code which could maybe help us determine what, where we should have a second uh, yeah. event. Absolutely. Yeah, look at the metrics. Yeah, mm -hmm. Judith, you were gonna say something? Yes, uh, we have a group that uh, in Madison, Indiana, and they don't generally attend our meetings. So we decided we would go to them. So uh, we did have a Saturday program. And uh, so we, we went there and uh, visited their various organs as kind of an organ crawl type. They uh, demonstrated them for us. We got to play for them. And, and then um, we had a luncheon there. And so we wanted to make them feel part of the group, even though they didn't usually attend our meetings. Ryan Frederick has asked, in your experience, and I think, Ronnie, you've already answered this, what percentage, roughly, of your membership participates in your events regularly? Oh. Well, we I don't have, that's events. Do you mean, like, our, just our luncheon? Or, in or I think he means just events regularly, any kind of events you're planning. That's a hard one for us because a lot of times it's in the church. So you don't know how many people are there from the church yeah. so unless you really know your members are you know are looking i don't know i would say maybe ours is 50 percent. i would say ours is 25 to 50 percent <laughs> yeah rana you mentioned i mean in case uh, in case the question is just about the these lunches uh, just to cover both bases you you mentioned oh. you get about 20 25 uh, who come uh, a group of 20 25 who come regularly and you've got 101 members I think you said so about 25% maybe um, you're finding have you're you're reaching with these for the lunches yeah 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 I mean I think it's it's always good to see what you can do um, to include include the others um, I talked to a dean I uh, I could not tell you what chapter as a person I didn't know well but I talked to them at a convention a couple of years ago and they were at a chapter of oh 100ish members something like that and they said that one of their goals when they started as a dean, and they didn't tell anybody about this, but one of their goals was to call or go see in person every single person on their roster that they don't regularly see at events. Um, oh. And I, I think that's wonderful. And you know, some of us, you know, Dallas is at like 250 members. Uh, that's that's a lot of ways to go, but um, but I think the benefit is is absolutely wonderful. Um, and the more that you can do that kind of thing, or even just your board, it doesn't have to be just you, you know, reaching out to people, like we said, you know, organists tend to be introverted and, um, you know, keep to themselves for the most part. And so we're seeing the ones who are not like that, um, or at least who are more towards the extrovert side. And that's wonderful. We always want to try and find a way, though, to, to include those others. Since we're almost uh, out of time, I, I want to kind of conclude and then if we have any other questions we can we can mention those but I want to kind of point to something that Judy you mentioned earlier that I love um, which is this idea of building community of casting a net or a, of, of creating a circle that includes people doesn't exclude people um, something that I have felt strongly about with the AGO for a long time is that if we ever hope to grow or, or not shrink at least we need to create this sense of community that you can argue about it used to be here and is lost or never was or, or whatever. But the fact is we need to create that. We need to continue at least creating that sense of community. Um, we need to 
in my opinion, one of the things that does that is this idea of creating ownership, which is why I mentioned Rana about asking the group themselves, you know, hey, let's do this. Let's all agree to do this to see if we can get more people or something. The idea of ownership of the guild is why I am still in leadership of the guild and, and I can plan to continue to be is because this is my AGO. And I have plans for what I want my AGO to be, to be better. And I, I want to continue that. And I, I'm so glad that these people here, these panelists are so passionate about that because I feel the same way. And this is just a way to, I think, continue to get that. You know, if you reach one person, that's one person you didn't reach before. And I think that that can only be a good thing. So for those of you who, who are considering something like this, who haven't done it before, give it a try. Try it mm -hmm. once opening event, closing event, or, uh, you know, something in the middle of the season, you know, everybody's too busy to, to go plan a big, you know, recital or go, you know, spend all their night at a recital or something. So do a little Saturday brunch or something in January or something like that. You know, something simple, as simple as you can make it to get started is a way to get started. And, and all, as I like to say, all that you can do is all that you can do. And I think that that's the best way to do that. So that's all I have to say on that. I don't know if we have any other questions um, that people want to ask or if any of, the, any of you panelists want to add anything. It's a good word. Well, I, I think we all want a sense of belonging. That's, that's it. We want to feel valued. We want people, and, and it's, it, it's, it's, there's no other feeling like it. Um, I, I had a wonderful experience when I was a member of a previous association and I made lifelong friends and it, it, you become a family, you really do, and you meet new people, which is also exciting. And, and part of the experience is to meet those new people and grow your friendships and your relationships. And so it sounds like what all of you are doing is wonderful. I'll just add that uh, Lynn Francisco also commented, she's uh, Dean of the Durham Chapel Hill chapter that they were pre-COVID, they were uh, hosting dinners or they were having them catered and they were paying a percentage of the meal for their members, which is nice if you can do that. It, it, you know, you don't, but again, like Connor said, it, it, even if you just meet up at Starbucks mm -hmm. for, for coffee or happy hour somewhere mm -hmm. it's 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 a way to just for people to 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 network and to chat and it is i think we could all say like we said tonight is as equally as important as any workshops or recitals or organ crawls mm -hmm. any final comments from anybody i just had a thought somebody shared with me that we're kind of like legos you know we, we've got certain number of of attachments. And I think this, this desire to belong, we're gonna find it, whether it's in a gym or a church or something. So why don't we why don't we make it that it's AGO? You know, let's make it so attractive that people say, I'm gonna use one of my Lego slots for this. So I have that picture in my mind. So that that gets me excited. That's a great visual. And Jeff Hoffman, thank you so very much. Thank you for this, he says. Our dean and I are meeting about this topic tomorrow, and this is helpful information. So we feel validated. Thank you, Jeff, and good luck tomorrow. And um, before we leave, I just want to thank Connor McMains, who has shown such extraordinary leadership um, in serving as president of the Committee on Membership Development and Chapter Support. And we will be saying goodbye to him at the end of this month. And Connor, I just wanna thank you for all that you have done. Um, your purpose, your vision, your passion for the AGO is very infectious. And so on behalf of everyone in our committee and all of those who know you, oh, you're getting lots of thumbs up. This is great. <laughs> thank you, it's, it's been a pleasure. It has, and thank you, Rana, thank you, Judy, thank you, Lois, thank you, Judith, as well. And I will just close by saying, um, we have another webinar coming up on June 26th that Felicia Ross, who is our manager of member engagement and chapter support is going to be presenting. And it's about, we're gonna to try to bring, put a little bit of technology into some of these webinars. And we're trying to keep them to 30 minutes because we need to be very mindful of everybody's time. So this one's gonna be on Google Forms and using them easily to update your substitute organist lists. It really does streamline data management. And I had a thought, I saw someone who I hadn't seen in years who is now going to 
ton of different associations and doing a session on everything you've ever wanted to know about AI. Could be interesting because it's, it's, it's affecting our profession. It's going to. So with that, I will just say thank you. Oh, one more thing, please. Uh, please, if your membership is up this month, we hope you will take a moment to renew. I'd be so remiss if I didn't ask this. And you know, the easiest way to do that is just call our headquarters. Anybody there will be happy to take your credit card. Don't bother sending snail mail, sending a check in the mail. And, and it's another way for us to get to know you and to talk to you. I had a wonderful conversation renewing uh, someone's membership who's 94 years old the other day. Mm -hmm. And it was such a pleasure. We had, we spoke for about 10 minutes. So it's an opportunity for us to get to know you if you give us a call and you renew that way. So I'll just th say thank you again to everybody. Thank you to all of our, our participants and our speakers. Everybody stay well, be well, and we hope to see you at a regional convention very soon. Good night. Good night.